Hi, I'm Kevin Mansell from Control F and welcome to part one of our two-part number systems tutorial. In this video, we're going to be introducing and explaining how numbers can be represented in binary and how we can convert between binary and the decimal number system that we're much more familiar with. In fact, we're going to start by looking at decimal numbers to try and avoid things getting too scary too quickly. As human beings, our brains have become trained through school and everyday life to work with decimal numbers. We're surrounded by decimal numbers all of the time. Prices, distances, ages, speeds. This constant exposure means that our brains are working with decimal numbers every day, and so some aspects of that become second nature to us. In contrast, most of us don't deal with binary numbers very often, if at all, and so they're a lot less familiar. But if we want to understand how computers and other electronic devices store data, we need to get to grips with binary. Let's start by taking a decimal number and breaking it down. If we were to say this number in English, we'd describe it as 237. Each digit has a place value, and we all know that from right to left, these are 1, 10, and 100 respectively. We can illustrate this by drawing a grid around the number and writing the place values above each digit. Although we don't consciously think about it, the process of making 237 is a two-stage process. First, we multiply each digit by its place value, so 2 times 100, 3 times 10, and 7 times 1. And secondly, we add those three results together. Now, you're probably thinking that I'm overdoing this, but, but bear with me. You'll see that what we're doing instinctively all of the time with decimal numbers in our heads, we'll be doing with binary numbers. It's just that some of the rules are different. Decimal is what we call a base 10 number system. And by that, we mean that there are 10 digits available for us to use. 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on through to 9. Binary is a base 2 number system, which means that we only have two digits available for us to use, namely 0 and 1. So any number represented in binary can only consist of zeros and ones. Here's a binary number for us to consider. In decimal, our place values were units, tens, and hundreds. In other words, each time we added a digit to our number, its place value would be a factor of 10 larger than its neighbor. Bear in mind that 100 is 10 squared, 1000 is 10 cubed. And in fact, if we consider the right-hand two columns, 10 is 10 to the power one, and 1, in other words our units column, is actually 10 to the power 0. You might remember from school that any number raised to the power of 0 is 1, but don't worry if you'd forgotten that fact, it's not exactly something we use every day. In other words, there's a pattern here. The place values in any number system are increasing powers of the base itself, starting with the rightmost column always being the base raised to the power 0, which will always be 1. The next column will be the base raised to the power 1, then the base raised to the power 2, and so on. Because binary is a base 2 number system, instead of each place value being 10 times larger than its right-hand neighbor, in binary, the place values double each time we add a new digit. Our rightmost column will be 2 raised to the power 0, in other words, 1. Our next column will be 2 raised to the power 1, in other words, 2. The next column will be 2 squared, and then 2 cubed, and so on. Okay, so now we know the pattern, let's substitute in the actual place values for a binary number. Remember, because binary is a base 2 number system, the place values for each column double as we move from right to left. 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, and 128. Because we're so comfortable working with decimal numbers, it's quite common that we'll want to convert a binary number into its decimal equivalent. Once we know the place values, this is a very easy process. We're repeating what we did when we looked at 237 earlier. In other words, we multiply each digit by its place value. Let's try that with our binary number. Starting from the left-hand side, we find a 1 in our 128 column, so we multiply the digit by its place value. Considering the next column, we have 0 multiplied by 64. Remember, any number multiplied by 0 is 0. We continue this process of multiplying each digit by its place value for the remaining columns. 
If you cast your mind back to our decimal number, you'll recall that the second part of our process is to add all of these results together. In other words, the binary number 1011-0010 is equivalent to decimal 178. Try this process yourself with the binary number shown on screen and check the comments for the answer. Before we finish, let's just take a moment to compare and contrast binary and decimal numbers. Binary is a very simple number scheme. There are only two possible values that a binary digit can take. This is both a blessing and a curse. Representing numbers in binary can be achieved with a very simple system. We just need to be able to differentiate between two possible states. In the early days of computing, information was fed into the computer using punched card. Strips of card on which information was encoded through the presence or absence of holes. Simple. The computer hard disk drives we use today are amazing machines which cram huge amounts of information into a small space. But at the lowest level, they involve a, a tiny read-write head detecting whether a particular area of a disk is magnetized or not. In other words, whether that area represents a 1 or a 0. So representing data in binary and reading that data back is relatively simple. But the disadvantage is the number of digits required to represent the numbers we want to store. If you think back to our number conversion, we needed eight binary digits, but only three decimal digits to represent the same number. In other words, decimal is a more compact number scheme than binary. Because each digit can take one of 10 possible values, we don't need as many digits to represent the same number compared to binary, which makes it much easier for us as humans to work with. I hope we've helped you make sense of binary. Do subscribe to our channel and do check out our part two video in which we look at an even more compact number scheme, hexadecimal. See you next time.